It is crude. It is offensive. And it's ugly. In the Arab world, racist depictions of black people are rampant. <laughs> and the use of blackface is rife. Black people are routinely cast into subservience, playing servants, prostitutes, or they're shown as straight up objects of ridicule. When we watch TV shows or movies, black people are always inferior. And blackface is an inferior, negative, and racist concept, which should not belong in the Arab world. We almost never speak about this segment of Arab society, black people. Firstly, because they never get to speak in public spaces. The black person is a citizen in the Arab world, but an invisible citizen. Why? Because power made him invisible. The Arab world is, is entirely self-righteous. We would never admit that we're racist. Lebanese would never admit they're racist. The Libyans, they would never admit they're racist. Even people from Sudan, they would never admit that they're racist you know, like against their own black people. And so it was only through, you know, like creeding and being exposed to media, that once I realizing, okay, something really awful going on in here. Blackface is a practice rooted in the 19th century United States. White actors blacken their skin to mimic enslaved Africans on southern plantations, creating a stereotype of lazy, ignorant black people. How blackface entered the Arab mainstream is not certain. British colonizers are thought to have brought it to Egypt in the 1880s. Be it in the Middle East or in the West, blackface is rooted in slavery and racism reinforcing a toxic notion that blackness is at best a joke. From Western politicians to media personalities... I mean, truly, political correctness has gone amok. ...to even a jumper designed by Gucci, blackface scandals are all over the news. Social norms have moved slowly by comparison in the Middle East. Things are changing, however. Take the case of Shemat Saif a star on the Arab world's most widely watched media network, NBC. A skit she performed earlier this year caused a storm online. Shema Asaif is sitting in the front of a van and she's speaking just, it's not comprehensible Arabic, it's not comprehensible anything. It's this awful, overly sexualized, nonsense dialect that is an attempt, I think, to represent the Sudanese dialect. And it's, it's very offensive. In the other video, there is Shema with a purportedly her little boy who constantly has to go to the bathroom and she has him urinate in a jar. And when he does so, people are horrified. <laughs> I cannot imagine a woman wiping the urine off of her hands onto other passengers. It, it just wouldn't happen. So this idea that the Sudanese are uncleanly and they don't care and that they have no hygiene is also quite racist. Underpinning this racist form of comedy is a deep social amnesia, a denial of a history of slavery. Between the 7th and 19th century, Arab traders captured millions of African slaves and shipped them out of the continent. Slavery was not formally abolished in the Arab Gulf countries until 1970. Many contend a modern form of slavery still exists there today. The Arabic word for slave, abd, is commonly used as a racial slur. The Middle East history of slavery, the casual racism, particularly against Sudanese or Nubian people from the south of Egypt, and the depictions of black Arabs on screen are interwoven. But, as many Arabs often say, the context is different. Is it really fair to compare Arab slavery and blackface with their Western counterparts? I 
am sure that when people object to the idea that blackface is offensive in the Middle East, they're saying we are not talking about the American South, we are not talking about plantation slavery, we are not talking about the same kind of abuses or the same scale that happened in the southern United States. <laughs> However, the slave trade in the Middle East was huge, and the cultural impact of this slave trade has everything to do with blackface in the Middle East. Nobody has ever discussed any of that, and nobody has ever acknowledged this very dark and shameful history. So, you know, like, we keep shaming the Americans and the Europeans for whenever they do, like, anything racist, but at least they have somewhat come in terms with their dark history, or at least they're trying to confront it and, and face it head on, whereas there is no acknowledgement whatsoever of our um, shameful role of, of what happened to, to Africans in earlier in, the, in those centuries at these times. It's not uncommon to hear a defense of blackface in Arab media that goes something like this. There's no malice. It's a joke. It's totally harmless. The holes in that argument are too numerous to list, not least that black people aren't in on the joke. They're not even represented on screen and the misrepresentation of black people has consequences off-screen in the real world. In the Arab world, we have a range of skin colors from black to very pale white. Our preferences as Arabs, which align with the standards around the world, is that the whiter someone is, the more attractive they are. I have personally received a lot of comments, like, the night has come early, or I get called Shikabala. Shikabala is a black footballer and I shouldn't be offended, but the name is used in a derogatory manner to offend me. There are lots of sexual remarks related to black stereotypes. People have pulled my hair, spit on me and thrown things at me. People talk about me as though I don't understand Arabic, as though I don't know they are commenting about me. In mainstream media, no, I, I do not see a conscious decision or like a conscious measure that has been implemented to change a perception of blacks. I mean, I do not remember seeing uh, an African character being cast even in a periphery role in any um, Arab uh, mainstream TV or film. I think that is very addictive because any culture acknowledges its, its minorities no matter how small they are. And I think it also stems from the fact that we have no writers. We almost have no critics who actually like continue to talk about like these issues. The black person's image in the media and in the Arab world's psyche won't change for the better as long as black people themselves keep being silent. Nothing will change because the people who create these images are the ones who are in power, leaving the black people on the sidelines. I say that the black man needs to fully participate in the change, like what's happening in the United States. When the black community realized they were underrepresented in white TV, they made their own channels. They imposed change on society, which is far from being the case in the Arab world. In the Arab world, this image will never change as long as Arab people's mindsets and perceptions of black people don't change.